What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Before we get this awesome episode going on, I want to talk to you face-to-face about in a giveaway that we're going to have this upcoming game for the Notre Dame. Uh, we've been asked a lot about tickets, and, uh, well, we've come through for you. I can confirm that we have two tickets and a parking pass for the Notre Dame game this upcoming Saturday, the NC State home opener. We're ready to give them away. So if this video gets 100 likes, we will pick one of our YouTube subscribers as the winner. I mean, that's that simple. There's no give, you know, there's no tricks. There's not going to, we're not going to put you on a mailing list. You're going to get two tickets and a parking pass to the NC State game free of charge. Again, free of charge. This is, you know, easily $500 worth of awesomeness that we're going to give to you again, free, free. I can't, say, Michael, is it free? It's free. That's it's free. Heard. Yeah. So, um, make sure you hit that like, like, and subscribe button. Make sure that you comment below. Um, those are kind of the stipulations that we're going to uh, use to pick a winner. Um, that way we know that you're a legit follower of Tuffy Talk. So again, like, subscribe, hit that, and we're going to give you some tickets to NC State Notre Dame, and uh, we appreciate you. All right. With that being said, we are going to get into this episode of the Notre Dame preview with uh, Ben Belden of uh, I think it's under the dome. Is that what it is? or inside? Oh, I've been well, I, I've, I've been a little bit of already. everywhere. I was so worried that I had to give these tickets away. That's okay. Hey, I you know I'm kind of in uh, I'm a little bit in retirement. I guess you could kind okay. of say I, oh, I we're, used we're, to we're bringing you back off the bench. Right, right. I used to write a whole lot of places, podcast on my own, and that type of stuff, but. Um, you know, I come out of retirement to be guests and that type of stuff. So I don't really, there's not really one place you can find me, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we will make sure to get anything that you want us to plug and we will make sure we put that in the description. Uh, so, uh, we, you get your, uh, your, your due respect, but, uh, Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Excited to be here. Yeah. We're happy to have you. Uh, I, I just want to jump right in. Uh, you know, we're NC State's coming off of a, a hard fought twenty four to fourteen win over UConn last Thursday night, and uh, I don't feel like you've had any kind of hard fought games yet this year. <laughs> your uh, your first two contests against Navy over in Dublin was, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm saying? Um, lackluster from from a Navy perspective. Uh, I don't know how much you know Notre Dame. I'm sure they enjoyed their trip over there, and then you guys had. A uh, a game on uh, Saturday, um, and I'm just blanking on who it was because you destroyed destroyed them so bad again. Um, Tennessee State, Tennessee State. I knew it was a state. <laughs> um, and uh, again, both games you've given up a total of six points, and you scored darn near a hundred on your own. So just kind of give me your thoughts so far of the first two contests for Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. I mean, so far so good, but like that's how it was supposed to go. Um, you know. I think the boy, let's test my math here. I think it's like 98 to six is what Notre Dame is yeah, going by on I the think season. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I went out on a limb there, but anyway, I trusted myself. High school so, math is hard. Yeah, for real. Um, but in all seriousness, you know, uh, if you ask Notre Dame fans, you know, they're like, well, you know, that's nice. 42 to three was nice against Navy. 56 to three was nice against Tennessee state. If you ask some Notre Dame fans, they're like, no, it should be, should have been better. Neither team should have scored, you know, That's right. I mean, and, and I'm sure you guys hear that on your end with, with yeah. NC state fans as well. Um, you know, and in all seriousness, I guess there's a little bit of credence to some of that. Like, you know, Notre Dame was giving up some chunk plays early in the Navy game. Navy missed a field goal. Um, you know, I, you get that with a triple option team. It took a little while for them to, to adjust to that type of stuff. Um, you know, Tennessee state moved the ball a little bit throughout the first quarter. It was only seven to three at the end of the first quarter. And people were like, Oh boy, here we go. Uh, and then, you know, I actually tweeted and I'll give myself a pat on the back for this, but like, I was like, you probably could have scripted that start, uh, against an FCS school, you know, the week after you get back from another country, um, you mm-hmm. know, you got to imagine those college kids were behind the eight ball and classes and all that all week. And then you go play a game on Saturday against someone, you know, you're supposed to beat, you know, you could have scripted a lackluster first quarter. Um, but I said, I, I imagine Notre Dame is going to put on the burners here and they did. And one fifty six to three, uh, I think probably the biggest takeaway, um, in general is just how good Sam Hartman has looked. And I know, like I say, the, the, the opponents haven't been great, but, We've also mm-hmm. seen other Notre Dame quarterbacks not named Sam Hartman um, 
struggle in those games, not look as good as Sam Hartman did against similar type of opponents. Let's put it that way. Sure. Um, so I think if you're a Notre Dame fan right now, you're sitting here thinking like, okay, sweet. Like this is what it was supposed to look like. Like they were supposed to blow these teams out, but our quarterback looks darn good. And that's what everybody's really talking about right now. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's like, you can only play who's on, who's on the schedule. So, and, and you did what you were supposed to do. So it's like, oh, right. yeah, you're not, it's not a high level of competition, but um, for who it was, that was pretty much how it was supposed to go. <laughs> right. Yeah. And those games basically serve for your, you know, for you, NC State didn't quite have that same luxury as almost like a preseason game, if you will, for the NFL, like, like an NFL type. You get out there, you run some, run some plays against guys that aren't on your own team. You're not hitting your own players. Um, the, the goal is to go out and get wins, uh, show as little as you can and come out injury as injury free as possible. Um, if you hit all three of those measure mark, those measurements or benchmarks, uh, you consider it a success. And so I think to your point, um, Notre Dame has passed those first two tests. Uh, now, um, they do now step up in competition. Uh, they're going to play a Power 5 team in NC State and on the road. And I know you you traveled to Notre Dame, but that's really not a road game. It's, you know, it's a it's a neutral site and pretty much heavily, you know, a pro Notre Dame crowd at that as a neutral site. So uh, it'll be a little different. Uh, just kind of give me your thoughts on, on this team traveling to North Carolina State. Uh, you know, this is, like I said, the first test. Um, of many to come here in the next, you know, month, month and a half. You guys got a, a pretty tough schedule over the next six weeks. But uh, just kind of give me your thoughts on, you know, what what do you need to see from from this Notre Dame team to take those next steps? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's hard to really kind of pinpoint one thing, I suppose, because you know, I guess what I need to see is just you know the consistency um, and you know one thing that Notre Dame has done well in the first two games. I mean is is run the ball and that's kind of where Notre Dame hangs their hat um you know the offensive line lost a lot from last year but we knew that the guys that were stepping into those roles were were going to be good um because Notre Dame recruits and coaches the offensive line as well as just about anybody um but it was you know there were times last year that Notre Dame really struggled on the offensive line too and you looked at that coming into the season thinking like that Notre Dame was going to you know, be one of the best offensive lines in the country. And then you saw against, you know, Ohio state early in the season and uh, other opponents throughout the year, you know, when the offensive line struggled, Notre Dame really struggled. Well, so far through two games, they've looked pretty good. Now they, they played Navy and Tennessee state. Uh, so that's kind of the big thing is that if they're going to be able to run and get some of their, you know, Notre Dame has really great running back depth, um, old guys, new guys, you, you know, guys that have been there, guys that are making, getting their first carries, you know, that's been another thing, you know, outside of Sam Hartman. I mean, that's one a is Sam Hartman. One B is how good the running backs have looked uh, behind that offensive line. Now, can they do it against, like you said, a power five opponent? Um, because, you know, so far Notre Dame has been very, what's the word I'm looking for. I mean, they've been very balanced on offense. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, are they going to be able to do that? Maintain that balance. I think, you know, you know what you're going to get from Sam Hartman and that's, you know, he's going to be pretty darn good. Um, but he's, less effective if there's no threat of the running game. So I think that's kind of the big thing right now is, you know, can that offensive line that's relatively inexperienced at a couple of spots, three out of the five spots, um, you know, are they going to be able to, to maintain that against a power five opponent? Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Yeah, for me, I, I think you, you, know, you just kind of hit a couple points that I wanted to touch on. And I think that our keys to the game is your offensive line and our defensive line in the run game. Um, I think uh, other than we had, and I don't know if you had a chance to watch the Connecticut NC state game at all, but um, the uh, we, we got, we got gashed on, on one really long run for 70 yards for a touchdown or 71 yards. Um, other than that, I thought NC state played a really good um, run defense um, and they typically do, you know, they, they, they typically get to the ball really well and, and, and they make a lot of their hay stopping the run. 
Uh, I, I think that's going to be a key for NC State. If we can stop the run and then get pressure on Sam Hartman uh, from the defensive perspective, I think that sets State up uh, to make to make a lot of a um, lot, lot of money. Um, Michael, kind of what do you what are you thinking there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's obviously going to be that. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, mm-hmm. like Ben said, Notre Dame wants to run the ball. Yep. Um, you know, I that is definitely concern after UConn they hit they hit a couple big runs um but we do get we didn't have Savion Jackson who by all accounts is probably the best out of the three defensive linemen at at run defense right um so fingers crossed we get him back for the for that for Saturday um yeah. you know if he's back I feel okay about it but you know Notre Dame's I mean that their offensive line is is going to be a tough test yeah, I mean, they definitely have a couple of NFL perspe- uh, prospects on that mm-hmm. O line. They always um, do, yeah. Yeah, always do. Yeah, Ben Ben hit that on the on the head. Oh. That uh, you know, that's that's where they like to do their thing. But uh, yeah, for for us, you know, this is a a reunion if so- of sorts. Seeing Sam Hartman again, um, still wearing a gold helmet, albeit a different shade, and not having a WF on the side of it. But uh, you know, he's definitely no stranger coming to Carter Finley. Um, some of the stats that I've seen is, you know, again, this is with the Wake Forest mesh offense is state has, you know, I I don't know if they, I would say had his number, but they, they've held their own against him. Um, um, you know, this is a Sam Hartman that I, I like to come back to this stat that, you know, he had six turnovers personally last year against Louisville. Uh, so he, you know, he can turn the ball over, uh, you know, if, if, if pressured, uh, so I, again, I think that's the key. If we somehow, you know, our, our cornerbacks can, can cover, um, and we can just, you know, stop that run and get, get Notre Dame into, into long situations. I, I think that gives us a really good chance. Uh, Ben, just kind of talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, we talked about the run game, but, you know, about the wide receivers and, and, and Sam has had some nice games throwing the ball. Um, and again, it's, we keep coming back to that Navy, um, <laughs> Navy Tennessee State, you know, comparison. So it's really hard to get a good gauge on it. Um, you know, you you what do, what 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 do your eyes tell you when you look at, at at that from a technique standpoint? Um, well, I guess what I would say is yeah, and you kind of mentioned like the Wake Forest mesh offense, you know, one of the bigger talking points um, you know, Notre Dame critics, Notre Dame fans, to be honest with you, had this talking point, had this, I don't know, apprehension, I guess, is how does Sam Hartman do when it's not read option RPO mm-hmm. every play? Um, can he sit back there and can he read everything? Can he he do those types of things in a more traditional pro style? I guess I'll kind of call it, although I don't know that I would make the argument that Notre Dame's offense is real pro style, but uh, more of a pro style type of an offense uh, than what Wake Forest had. And I mean, I think so far so good. Like uh, I'm looking at Sam's stats right now. I mean, he's 33 for 40, 445 yards. He didn't play the second half against Tennessee State. Um, you know, that's that's pretty good. Um, I don't have the stat prepared, but, you know, other smarter Notre Dame people than I have have, you know, when he's been blitzed, he's been blitzed like 15 times this season uh, and is 14 for 15 against the blitz. Again, it's Navy and Tennessee State. I get right. that. Um, but, and you know, well, I mean, you can pretty much say everything that I say with that caveat, but, sure. um, but I mean, he's, <laughs> I mean, you break down the film, you watch some of the things he's, he's throwing guys, you know, there's a, a clip going around where it's pretty obvious. He can't see his receiver at one, on, in one instance against Tennessee state, but he knows where he's going to. And he just puts the ball right into the window and the receiver runs into it. Um, you know, that was speaking of receiver. And I know you kind of alluded to this. I mean, like that was probably Notre Dame's biggest, um, question mark, especially on the offensive side of the football, um, coming into this year was like, who in the heck is going to catch the passes? Um, because they didn't really have a lot back. Uh, and the guys that they had back were, you know, not proven at the very least, got some snaps, but just not consistently proven. Uh, so far he's made those guys look good. I mean, they've, they've, Jaden Greathouse, true freshman, caught two touchdowns against Navy. Uh, Jaden Thomas, who is probably the most proven guy, has eight receptions, 125 yards over a couple games. Um, Chris Ty- Tyree, rec- recruited as a uh, as a running back, is kind of playing like that slot role now. Um, you know, has looked like a receiver, to be quite honest with you. So, uh, I mean, so far so good. Like, I, like I say, it's it, you said it. It's really hard to tell, but like the things that 
we thought as Notre Dame fans coming into the season, like, oh boy, like I'm worried about this. Haven't shown a reason to be worried about yet. Now, right. could that change when when Power Five opponents start rolling in and we start rolling into Power Five opponents? Absolutely. But I mean, right now they've, you know, Sam Hartman and his receivers have left. Not much room for doubt yet. Let's put it that sure. way. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. From a state perspective, um, again, we've only played the one game against Connecticut, and that was Thursday. Um, I would probably like to have had another game before this game, another tune-up, if you will, um, just to kind of work out some of the things that I think that state needs to work on. Um, some of the things that that I think that state needs to work on is short yardage running, um, maybe catching the ball a little bit better. We had some drops, um, just some of the timing with Brendan Armstrong, and I, and I think you know Brendan Brendan had a great game, but you know he probably missed three or four passes uh, that he could have had. And then just a little bit more run discipline um, as far as the defensive line. Um, you know, Michael mentioned it earlier. I think if Savion Jackson is there, he probably holds that line um, or holds the edge, excuse me, and, and they don't get outside and, and get that big run. Um, Michael, for you, what are some things that, you know, it, you know, maybe you could piggyback on think something that I said or w- what you see that, um, you know, state needs to kind of step up and do uh, to kind of match some of the things that Notre Dame will will be presenting to us. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll be interested to see how the Notre Dame defense plays Brennan Armstrong because UConn pretty much was content on, they were going to drop their safeties deep. Mm-hmm. They weren't going to allow, allow any deep passes, which to their credit, they didn't, but that's because they were just like, they were 15 to 20 yards off the ball from the snap. So we just took a lot of underneath stuff. Um, I don't, I, I don't see Notre Dame doing that because it seemed like UConn, that was their strategy. They knew they were going to be outmatched from a talent perspective. So they're just like, we weren't going to let anything deep. Um, But um, for me, it's going to be how to see how Brandon Armstrong responds to how Notre Dame plays him in the passing game. And if he can be a little more patient, um, letting the plays develop because he, he he said it in his post game interviews after that UConn game that he probably took off a little earlier than he needed to to run um and I think that's just being a first you know the first game with a new team new offense he knew you know he trusted his feet um but I think he and like I said he admitted himself he needs to kind of trust the line more and and, and let the plays develop a little more so um that's one thing I'm in, definitely interested to see um, how that plays out. Yeah, Ben, uh, anything there you kind of want to rebuttal or just kind of dive deeper into? Um, um, I don't know. Like, I guess um, to kind of piggyback off of what I was saying, and I, you know, as you were talking, I was kind of thinking like, man, mm-hmm. I, I, I wish I would have made that point. Like, Hit it. Notre sure. Dame is – really relying on, you know, I mentioned a couple of the receivers, like Mm -hmm. like, I I need to paint, I think probably this receiver picture a a little bit better. Uh, You know, Jaden Thomas, redshirt sophomore. Okay. Um, Really just a guy about the only guy that had for the most part caught a pass uh, or at least more than like five to 10 passes coming into this year. Tobias Merriweather is a guy that, you know, Notre Dame fans have been waiting to break out. Um, you know, sort of seemed like as a true freshman last year, you know, you'd see a glimpse. Um, he had a big touchdown in a game mid season, and then you just didn't see him for a while. And it's like, man, these wide receivers are not producing. And most of these receivers that we're talking about are not at Notre Dame anymore. Uh, why is Tobias Merriweather not playing? Well, he still only caught a handful of passes. Um, Dion Colsey, you know, was a guy that as a true freshman fought injuries, but didn't play, or I'm sorry, was good, but then fought injuries all of last year, but didn't really play a whole awful lot. Uh, Notre Dame loses Michael Mayer to the NFL. I mean, he was their best receiver at tight end. Um, and their tight ends thus far, you know, a couple of plays, but like nothing like you look at like, Oh, that's the next Notre Dame tight end, you know? Right. Um, so um, and then you bring in, you're starting to rely on freshmen. Like I mentioned, Jaden Greathouse, uh, Rico Flores Jr., true freshman, Matt Salerno, a graduate guy that was a walk on, uh, plays a little bit in the slot as well. So, you know, n- a big major thing, I think, in all seriousness, is 
Notre Dame has to be able to run the ball because these receivers, like you're not going to go out and throw the ball 55 times and right. probably be in a real good spot, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's like I say, it, you know, it sounds, you can get on any podcast, I guess, and say, well, the, the game's going to be won or lost in the trenches, but it's true. It's true. Yeah, like yeah. Notre Dame's got to be able <laughs> to run the times, ball. Yeah. yeah. And it got to be able to run the ball for then those guys to be able to play well. Um, and like I say, Sam Hartman's gonna gonna put the ball where it needs to be, but he can be as good as anybody in college football, and still, you know, if there's no separation, he can put the ball on the dot every single time. But if there's a defender right there, then it's not going to do anybody any good. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Like I say, it, it's cliche, but like it's that offensive line, it's running the ball, it's Audric Estime, Notre Dame's big Jerome Bettis like type um, running back that's probably gonna be the guy that gets the lion's share of the carries, especially in a bigger type of a game like this. That's where Notre Dame's got to do it. Yeah, I I think, I mean, we keep talking and harping on it, but I truly do believe that this game is, you know, strength on strength. Um, who's going to prevail? Uh, and, um, you know, if you, if I had to, if I had to say one unit was stronger than the other, I think our, I think our corners, our secondary is probably, the, the biggest strength, um, though we've got some really strong uh, linemen, and, and so if we can if we can steal, if you will, s- some, you know, some some tackles, some you know TFLs, some one, two, three, four yard gains, and put you guys in, in, in more in a passing situation, um, and then potentially dial up some blitzes, which we didn't really do a lot against UConn last week. I think we only probably blitzed. Michael, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe two or three times. I mean, like, 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 really brought the pro the pressure. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Yeah. So, and again, and I think some of it was just by design. I don't think you want to show all your cards game one. And I'm sure you know Notre Dame is the same. They've probably been working on stuff that they didn't run. Um, you know, uh, for state or. And then you run some plays just to put it on film too. And I think, you know, Notre Dame's probably done a little bit of that, just something that uh, you know, state state has to be aware of. But I I I am curious to see, you know, how um Notre Dame, you know, obviously they're not gonna be intimidated by the environment. That's that's not really a thing, though. I though I do I do think a noon kick um plays into Notre Dame's advantage uh even with it being a sellout for nc state um i would have loved to have seen this as a 330 or even an early evening kick uh, to get as i like to say the state fans sauced up uh, and ready for the game but uh i i still think it's going to be a, a pretty electric environment um uh just uh i guess uh ben what w- you know what what does what does um just trying to think of how to say this uh like if if Sam if I gave you a number if Sam throws say two hundred and fifty yards two touchdowns two interceptions do you think you guys win or lose the game and I know there's other things involved in that you know I mean, you could run for five hundred yards but right but you know well you know just a, a line like that like what would you what would you say would that be like would you be concerned. Um, not terribly. The, the concerning part would be the two interceptions, obviously. Sure. Um, you know, twos. I mean, I guess it depends when and where too. I mean, sure. obviously, of like course. you said, there's there's a whole lot of variables you can throw there. But in general, I mean, to to answer your question, like, you know, can Notre Dame survive one or two um interceptions? Yeah, probably. If he only throws for 250 yards, I gotta I gotta think that means that they ran it pretty well. Right. Um. So that's kind of you know that would be what I would say is that, you know, if that's, that's the line and it's, he threw for 250 and, you know, they scored twice in the air and that probably means they ran for at least 150, 200 on the ground and scored a time or two there. I'd say, yeah, that's probably a recipe for Notre Dame to win. Now, if he throws those two interceptions deep in his own territory and right. you know, one's a pick six or whatever, then that, then you start talking a, a different story. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, like I say, you know, I, I'll sound like a broken record here. Forgive me, but like, we don't want to go in as much as, you know, we love Sam Hartman right now after two games. Like we still don't want him to go and have to throw it 50 times. Um, that's mm-hmm. probably not a, not a recipe for, um, you know, for things going real well. You throw it 50 times. That means you got behind. You had to make a comeback, whatever the situation. You couldn't run the ball at all. All, right. all of those things are bad for Notre Dame. 
Yeah. Um, Michael, you got anything? No, I I I agree with Ben. I mean, if if, if Sam Hartman's throwing the ball a lot, I, I feel good about our chances, especially with his history and Carter Finley kind of against Tony Gibson's defense. He hasn't hasn't been that great. So if he's throwing the ball a lot, I I like our chances. Yeah, I would say uh, I would agree with that statement as well. If with Ben, if 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 Sam Hartman throws forty plus times, I, I definitely like our chances. And if he's throwing forty plus times, I can I can almost say that he's going to have at least one or two interceptions. Um, yeah. Just just statistically, that's how it bores out with him. Um, again, especially if we can get pressure, I think the key the key is just getting him in his face and making him uncomfortable as much as we can. And um, just, you know, we have to, we have to figure out a way to stop the running game. And I, I, I think, um, you know, we've, we've only played, you know, a handful of times. I think this will be the fourth time we've ever played each other. Uh, the second time um, in Carter Finley. And we all remember the last time these two teams played at Carter Finley. It wasn't a pretty sight. Um, I think my shoes are still wet from that game, but uh <laughs> Brian um, Kelly is gone. So yes, yes. <laughs> he did. Little... He was he was dang to throw that thing forty times that day in a hurricane. <laughs> and yeah. I, I thank him. I thank him. Yeah. But uh, no, yeah. where I was going with that, other than that game, uh, you know, he, he, Notre Dame has always put an emphasis on running. You know, from even back in the day when you guys run the option, the triple option. Um, you know, you, you know, you've got a a long history of running backs and great offensive linemen. And, and that tradition hasn't changed. And I don't think um, the DNA of Notre Dame has changed even as the game has changed. So um, it's going to be a real challenge in, in, in that aspect. And so I think, uh, I think that's a good pausing spot here for part one. I think in part two, I want to kind of flip it, talk about some NC state offense against Notre Dame's defense, some keys there um, because, you know, believe it or not, you know, there's another side of the ball, right? And then we'll probably maybe talk a little special teams um, because, you know, that always seems to be what wins or loses these games, especially uh, we'll talk the point spread a little bit too. But uh, all right, Wolfpack Nation, like I said, that'll wrap it for part one. Come back for part two and do not forget, all right, do not forget to like this video, comment on this video because we have this ticket giveaway. We have to give away these two tickets, two tickets and a parking pass. They're yours for a sold out game. All right. Tickets are going on StubHub, SeatGeek, $250. We're going to give them to you for free. So, again, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on this video in order to be eligible to win that contest. All right, Wolfpack Nation, we'll see you in episode two. And as always, go Pack.